does this shelter look like a monument? It is a monument to the work of the Civilian Conservation Corps. Hi, I'm Shelley, an interpretive naturalist with Upper Wabash Interpretive Services. And as you will see in this program, this shelter looks very similar to others built by the CCC in our state parks. Our Indiana parks contain many monuments to the work of the CCC, so let us think about why it's important to remember the Civilian Conservation Corps. It was much more than just giving us parks to enjoy. So let's travel back in time to a tough period in our nation's history and see what we can learn. During the Great Depression of the 1930s, the United States experienced difficult economic times. Many people were out of a job and living in poverty. When Franklin Roosevelt became president in 1933, he started a broad range of programs called the New Deal. The Civilian Conservation Corps provided jobs to unemployed people, and through their work, they built parks, planted trees, and provided an important service to the public. The CCC was designed as a work program for young men ages 18 to 25. The workers would sign up for a renewable six-month term in which they would gain job skills through work on projects mostly related to land management, soil conservation, and park construction. They received a $30 per month stipend, $25 of which was sent home to their families. The CCC workers lived in camps that were run by the U.S. Army. The Civilian Conservation Corps offered educational classes and skills training. Camps also had sports teams, newsletters, and recreational activities. A number of Indiana State Parks were developed by the CCC, which was and remains one of the most popular programs of the New Deal. Indiana had 56 CCC companies in all. By the end of the 1930s, Indiana had 10 established state parks and each of them had hosted a CCC company, and many of them had hosted more than one over the course of the 1930s. These CCC workers built shelter houses and trails, they dug lakes and built dams, they even built the Spring Mill Inn. We are able to appreciate and enjoy these recreation features built by the CCC because of the great work that they did. I am now standing next to the CCC Camp Water Tower Base, located in the youth tent area of Abachi State Park. And during the preparation of the camp in the months prior to the men of Company 1592 arriving, this was probably one of the first structures built by local WPA workers. The CCC camp buildings and the above water tower tank no longer exist. But this base still stands to remind us of the days of the Civilian Conservation Corps. So how did the community of Bluffton feel about the CCC boys coming to this area? Let's go walk in their footsteps and find out. During construction of CCC camps, communities benefited as local labor and supplies were often used. And from July 1935 to February 1941, this youth tent area in Obachi State Park was the camp location for Company 1592. On November 3rd, 1935, 1,500 attended a grand dedication ceremony that took place here for the Bluffton CCC camp. As reported by the Bluffton Evening News, the dedication ceremony opened with prayer and then all in attendance sang the song America together. It must have been a very patriotic experience with 216 enrollees in their dress khakis. Imagine in this area where kids now cook hot dogs and feast on s'mores. And something almost prophetic one of the commanders said to the 1500 that day was this. We are trying to give them proper and valuable development. The educational training given these boys will be remembered long after the relief work is forgotten. The CCC was not just about giving jobs to hungry boys. The allotment money helped their families and the men learned skills they could use after serving in the CCC. Much confidence was achieved by the men that no longer felt a burden to society, and some families wouldn't be if Dad hadn't met Mom locally while serving in the CCC. Hi, my name is Larry Heron. I'm the son of Leo Heron. From, he worked here at Bluffton Camp on 1592 
and he was a cook here. He cooked for over 200 men, and this is his rolling pin. Right here is him in the middle of the picture. All right, so Dad, being a chef, he also would be up in the morning, and he would always do the bugle in the morning to play reveille around the flagpole. Well, one day when he, he got up, the bugle was missing, and because boys will be boys, and somebody had borrowed it to play a prank. So he decided that this was not going to stop him because he went out and used his hands to do and everybody mustered around the flagpole and therefore he says it went on so the, the guy that pulled a prank so it was on him and dad using the motto of the CC camps is we can take it and therefore it went back and there was a joke back on the other guy and it was a ha ha was on him and he got a giggle out of it himself so that was one thing they did to entertain themselves amongst one another. And being with a cook, he and the skill he learned, which helped him out throughout life, but mainly it helped him a lot when he uh, started to date my uh, mother. There they met in Bluffton at the downtown courthouse, which he used to call the chicken coop, where the girls would, would uh, sit up in the steps and the guys would walk around and they would do the, the dating game there, per se. And so, then at times he would liberate uh, maybe an orange or something that maybe he'd be at the CC camp and impress his future mother-in-law with a fresh orange. And that made some brownie points with him. And so uh, eventually I'm the product of the success he had with mom. Being at the CC camp, he also had hobbies that all the men enjoyed. Uh, photography, uh, ceramics, uh, sewing, Many different talents they had to keep the guys to have hobbies. Well, Dad also liked photo, uh, and he learned how to use a camera and develop pictures. And this also helped him in the war when they moved him from being a cook in the war. Then he became a work at a mass unit developing pictures there of x-rays. This is a letter that is really dear to me. It's a letter written to his mother that expresses probably a lot of men's thoughts. But I'll paraphrase some of this, but mainly it says here is that by having a CC camp, it kept him out of a lot of mischief and trouble. And he said this is very important to him because he could have got in trouble and and been in jail and, and it, on things like that. And also it, it also tr trained him to think and be organized, to respect things, and to be to learn a trade, which he did, which become a cook. And he was very thankful that. The money he got was sent back to his mother to help him during hard times. And with all of this here, he felt a value to himself and enjoyed the, the area, the men, and what he was doing to become part of a history that uh, was going to be as we have here today. And in short, he thanked the CC camp for having this great opportunity to do this for himself and also the country. Thank you. I think the CCC is the greatest organization ever established for the youth and the hope it will forever continue. The Civilian Conservation Corps did not last forever as enrollee Leo Heron would have liked, but it did leave a lasting impact. CCC worker statues bring attention to this important period in our nation's history and honor the great contribution of the men who served. As of September 2019, 76 CCC worker statues have been dedicated throughout the United States. We have two in Indiana, one in Versailles State Park and this one at Obachi State Park. I am Myra Lighty Myrtle, and I am the daughter of Wayne Lighty, Charles Wayne Lighty, and he's the reason why the statue is here today, because he was a Civilian Conservation Corps worker. Back in the late 30s, there were no jobs for young men my dad's age, and uh, so uh, the opportunity to serve with the Civilian Conservation Corps was a way to get him away uh, out of his house but uh, also help his family with uh, the money that came back to their home for his serving. The boys were thin, they rode the rails, they, there were many of them that were, did not have jobs and they were not real big people. 
you look at that, that's kind of small for how our young men are today. But uh, they fed them good and they took care of them. So one of the skills that dad learned when he was in the CCC was his truck driving skills, which he carried on then as a young family man, take care of him, his family, and also he carried it in to uh, the Second World War because these boys were conditioned in the CCC to then be drafted up and, and most of them went into the Second World War. But Dad also talked about learning to uh, how to manage be and get along with people and uh, he said he grew up when he was in the CCC and a lot of the men that we've met have said the same thing. I really enjoyed my life as a CCC boy. Uh, that's where you learn to become a man instead of a kid. <laughs> you have to grow up pretty fast. Well, I, I learned how to take orders. I learned how to accept responsibility. And uh, I learned that you start a project and uh, you stay with it till it's finished. And uh, um, just it's it, it, it just well you then you start going to the girls <laughs> you know when you get a little set in your head and, and, and so anyway that's uh, that's about it i uh, i think that was a main responsibility of just learning to grow up dad said that he became a man in ccc uh, before he was getting in a little bit of trouble here and there's kind of ornery fellow but he learned responsibility and he learned to um, take how to take charge and how to uh, be a team player. And uh, he learned a lot when he was in the CCC and we're grateful for it. And that's why the statue's here. The entrance sign behind me is also a monument to the Civilian Conservation Corps. The stone pillars that still stand were constructed by the men of Company 1592. And if you'd like to learn more about Civilian Conservation Corps history, the Friends of Obachi State Park have created a history hunt. This brochure called CCC Come See Our History is available at the front gate. And don't forget, you can learn more about Civilian Conservation Corps history when you visit our other state parks as well. Constructed by the Civilian Conservation Corps, Hominy Ridge Shelter at Salamone River State Forest looks similar to the shelters at Obachi State Park. This shelter and the stone and timber picnic tables in the surrounding ridge area were built by CCC Company 589. As you can see, this picnic grove is a beautiful area for visitors to still enjoy many years after the men worked hard here. It is hard to believe that when they arrived, the property ground was mostly exhausted farm fields. So along with road, lake, and structure building projects, the men planted thousands of trees. In fact, lumber was brought up from southern Indiana because there was none. It is sad that some of the places the CCC worked hard to construct over 80 years ago have begun to show damage due to age and even sadder that some structures have been victim to vandalism. Have these situations occurred because we have forgotten or maybe not understood the value of the lessons learned from our nation's history? Let's learn more about the Civilian Conservation Corps. Located at the Family Primitive Campground here at the Salamone River State Forest, this stone structure that was once part of the entrance to the CCC camp area here stands to remind us that this was the camp area for Company 589 from July 1935 to December 1940. The large sign that you see behind me, that was actually about where the recreation building that was in the center of the camp was located. Camp Legro itself was built with temporary buildings similar to other CCC camps like Camp Bluffton. The recreation building was in the center of the camp area where men could gather building lasting friendships or purchase items from the canteen. 
According to the camp newspaper, candy bars and pop cost five cents in those days. Most of the time, Company 589 had around 200 men enrolled. Each barrack held 50 with cold wood floors, tar paper walls, and coal burning stoves. Orderliness was expected with inspection every day. Enrollees were also expected to keep their mess kits clean after meals in the mess hall. The boys gained much needed weight. In one month, as reported by the camp newspaper, the men ate eight cows, drank 638 gallons of milk, consumed 560 feet of franks, which was the length of five barracks, and one ton of potatoes only lasted them 10 days. Medical care was also provided. Camp headquarters held the infirmary. In addition to a camp doctor, leadership was provided by military officers. CCC camps functioned under Army regulations and discipline, but no military training given to the enrollees. CCC enrollees were mostly unskilled, so in addition to the commanders, local experienced men also provided leadership and guided specific trades like carpentry and masonry. These stone steps would have led to the headquarters of Company 589. A typical day would have started with roll call and then reveille at the flagpole. A hearty breakfast would have been served in the mess hall to prepare the men for their work day. The men typically worked 40 hours a week. Lunch would have usually been served at the work site and then at the end of the day, retreat at the flagpole and then dinner again in the mess hall. During non-working hours, like evenings and weekends, education was a volunteer activity that most took advantage of. Organized by the camp educational advisor, men learned to read, earned high school diplomas, took college correspondence courses, received first aid certifications, learned to type, and much more. The CCC was about developing boys into men and giving them opportunity. My name is James L. Emmons, and I'm the son of Lemoyne Emmons, and my dad was in the CCCs here at this camp, 36 through 1938, and my dad worked on the stone crew here. During his stay here, uh, he came from a large family, uh, 10 kids, and it was hard times for those people, and uh, I think he was really glad to to be employed here, to get in here, uh, as I'm sure all the others were. Uh, during his time in here working on the stone crew, uh, he, he kept what he learned here with him on that. And, and when he finished here, uh, not too long after that, like I'm sure most of the other boys, uh, he went into World War II. And uh, he was overseas for two and a half years. Went on in Omaha Beach Red survived that and uh, when he got home he used the skills that he learned here to become a brick mason uh, out of local 12 in Marion, Indiana and uh, before dad died he got his 50-year gold card. During my dad's stay here uh, one of the highlights of his stay was once a week weather permitting uh, he would walk to Lagro and get some ice cream uh, I think that was the highlight of his week, really. <laughs> uh, he came from a family of 10 kids, and uh, like most of the others, it wasn't the best of times, but what little money he did have, he had money to afford that. Uh, in the summer of 2016, uh, Gary Hunter and myself were asked to repair this picnic ring, is what I call it. Uh, and, uh, as we looked at it, the top two courses on the whole circle were pretty much uh, in disrepair. And the fireplace here with me was probably 65 or 70 percent gone. So Gary and I proceeded to fix it. And, uh, and so we replaced the, the whole top two courses on the, on the ring. I'd done this side 
and Gary done the other side, and we repaired the the bench here. It was it was really bad. <laughs> and we pointed up what was left, and then we put new stone. But it's back just the way it was. We agreed to do this, and one of the reasons I really wanted to help Gary do this was the fact that my dad was on the stone crew here when he was a CCC. But it, to me, is a, a very important historic piece. Uh, we didn't want it to be forgotten in time. The people that built it uh, basically are the ones that fought World War II, uh, the greatest generation. And we didn't want it to be lost, so so we restored it. And uh, I hope for many years to come, everybody gets to enjoy it. The other main thing is that the Civilian Conservation Corps served thousands of young men in this country uh, for years and providing them with an income that was much needed during the Great Depression when there was 25% nationwide unemployment. And there was no safety nets then. There wasn't any unemployment or none of this. And it was either work or do without. And that's the way it was. <laughs> and so I hope that this, this proves a point that it'll be here for the future generations to to look back and remember what the CCCs did and what those men stood for. The next time you visit the Salamone River State Forest, remember you will be walking in the footsteps of the men of CCC Company 589. And if you'd like to learn more about their accomplishments, this information booth located near the Hominy Ridge parking lot on the back side will have photos comparing images from 80 plus years to today. The CCC boys of Company 589 also constructed the Francis Slocum State Forest near Mississinawal Lake. So let's go visit there next to see what other lessons from CCC history we can learn. Does this shelter look familiar? It is the shelter located at the Francis Slocum State Recreation Area at Mississinawa Lake. In 1939, as work projects were finishing at the Salamone River State Forest near Lagro, Indiana, the men of CCC Company 589 began work at the Francis Slocum State Forest located along the Mississinawa River near the community of Peoria. They traveled between properties and trucks, and during the warmer times of the years of 1939 and 40, they stayed here in tents. In addition to the tents, an office and mess hall barracks was constructed, and with education still a priority, two large tents were set up for this important Civilian Conservation Corps opportunity. As part of the education program of each camp, each CCC company published a camp newspaper with the purpose of benefiting the boys on subjects of interest and, most importantly, to incite jokes among the enrollees. Reading issues that have survived from that time period allow us a unique window into camp life. It was obviously not all work and no play. There were ball games, boxing matches, movies, parties, and dances. A fun example comes from the Salamonian, one of the camp papers for Company 589, which says the following. Arrangements have been made to import the acme of feminine pulchritude from Lagro and nearby towns to provide partners for tomorrow's Terpsy Korean Festival. As has been the custom in past events, enrollees will arrange their dates on the evening of the dance in the army truck. Strange as it seems, the young ladies find immense enjoyment in this novel taxi arrangement. Filled with news of camp activities, jokes, and cartoons, you can read the CCC camp newspapers. They are available to view online in the Indiana State Library's digital archive. The Civilian Conservation Corps represented hope where there was none before and changed the life of every American then to the present. Its far-reaching results still go on. A visit to many of our Indiana State Parks honors the legacy of these men 
and allows us to be reminded that although times are sometimes tough, things will get better and positives can come from those times. So why should we remember the Civilian Conservation Corps? Let's conclude with the words of the men themselves. It was not our intention to bring back the great towering white oaks, the beautiful walnut, stately poplar, and other trees, making this the finest hardwood section of the country, or revitalizing the soil to again make it produce the kind of bumper crops of yesteryear. It was rather to change it from a useless, expensive eyesore to a place of pleasant surroundings recreation and into one of the finest forest and game preserves in the country. Just a place to go, enjoy nature's wonders, and spend happy hours in the out of doors. To make this change has required a great deal of planning, effort, perseverance, and cooperation. In every project, as they slowly unfold to completion, we have done the best we know how. In a big project of this kind, our best efforts sometimes fall a little short of our intentions. On the whole, however, we believe that our efforts have not been in vain and feel kindly toward this transformation and gladly invite you to go over the entire property with the sole idea that it was built for your use, a monument that will be handed down from generation to generation.